Welcome to the Restoration Group Podcast, where we're sometimes silly, and we have been before we hit uh, record, but we're always serious, always serious about investing in Oklahoma City leaders who desire to integrate their work into their Christian faith. I am your host, Clay Steves. Today, I am joined by both of my co-hosts, Aaron Scott and Michael Mead, and today is the beginning of a four part series. Before I tell what the series is, how are each of you feeling about the series we're about to take on? See, that's a loaded question because you're asking us to tap into things that we will be talking about in the series. I, I would decline never to answer. Question. I never. will tell you what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, oh, I see what you did there. No. Which is that this is going to be really valuable content for people's <laughs> awareness journeys. Hmm, cliffhanger. Oh, that, that was good. That was good. I mean, just thank you for <laughs> punting it to him and then he just We took practiced it. earlier. That was good. That's good. <laughs> um, okay, so the beginning um, of this four-part series is on self-awareness, self-awareness in the workplace. And um, today's series, we're just going to, today's episode, we're just going to set the, the groundwork, right? We're going to set the groundwork for the other three. Uh, in the next three episodes, we will talk through different tools we have used internally at Restoration Group uh, on our own personal awareness journeys, and we'll dive deeper into those, but today... We're going to set the stage and we're going to set the stage with a story from seventh grade. That's right. We're going to go back. Which Where is all just, good things happen. Yeah, so where all great things happen. And just a couple of years ago, it was not that long ago, seventh grade and on the school bus, not just seventh grade, but the school bus from Cimarron Middle School in seventh grade. Um, there was a gentleman, I probably shouldn't even call him gentleman because that was not no. a word you would use, but an eighth swine. grader, he was, no, 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 Greg, if you're listening, you're not a swine. He's wrong. Um, I actually am thankful for you. A smelly um, middle school kid. That, well, that would be accurate. I don't know a him, sm- but I feel, yeah. Right. Yep, it's, yep, yep, yep. Um, and we're on the bus and I don't know what began our heated discussion, also known as an argument between middle school boys, but what I know was what became the climax subject of our heated discussion. And that was a very important topic in my life at this moment. Okay. At that very moment. And that was whether or not I was preppy. (laughs) Okay. And again, very clearly look at me. Well, maybe we'll wait on that. We won't do the look at me part yet. Um, okay. So we're in a heated discussion. I mean, we're back and forth. We are arguing about whether I'm preppy or not. And I'm very adamant. I'm not just to clarify, because clearly I'm not preppy and he is very adamant that I am preppy and I am not taking any of his points. We are arguing back and forth. And then he begins to, I have no other way to describe it other than he systematically begins to describe me to me. Okay, mm. and he starts with yeah. It's always a fun moment, like right? He held up a mirror. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he literally was like, "Look at yourself." And what he did is he began with my bells. And you heard me correct. Did you say bells? I did say <laughs> bells because in seventh grade I signed up for percussion because I liked things like Weezer and Red Hot Chili Peppers. And, and I thought, when I think of Weezer, I always think of those bells. You always think of the bells. Yeah, right? crush the bells. Yeah. Yeah. And so I signed up for percussion, and they don't give you a drum set. They don't even give you a drum. They give you a set of bells. They want to see how committed you are. Yeah, well, how bad yeah. do you want? Well, yeah. let, let's see how I complimented the bells because after the bells, he moved to my hair, which was not like sun in in the garage bleached because I have black hair. Well, it's gray now, but you know, it was black. Um, it, it was um, blonde tips done at Austin Taylor Salon in Edmond. Come on. Blonde. You paid okay. for those. Uh, well, my mom did. Yep. No doubt yep. about it. Yeah. Paid for those. You paid um, for them in other <laughs> other ways. Like yeah. this very exactly. moment. Exactly. So he moves from my bells to my blonde tips and then he moves to my sweater. Was it in vest form? It was not. It was just a, that would have even been worse. I don't know. It was a full red sweater with stripes. I can still picture it. But then he describes my sweater tucked into my slacks. Ooh, there it is. That has the braided belt that I'm wearing. Yeah, I, stop making a what face an old at me. Man. I know. I mean, Hold on. And he completes preppy his, old man. his mirror. Of, thank you, Aaron. Um, he just he finishes it by talking about my penny loafers. <laughs> my you penny loafers. Just, that's really, you didn't I, like, even need the rest of the stuff. Just, he could have just been like, look at your shoes, man, and walked away. But I genuinely did not have awareness. <laughs> That I was a prep. Did you think preppy. it meant something else? I don't know. Yeah, no, I, no, that'd be a good excuse. Oh, it's pretty yeah. preppy to be preppy and say that you're not preppy. Like, that's a preppy thing. Yeah, that's fair. It was like Inception. You were, yeah. it was multi layered what was happening yeah, you guys here. You're giving me way too much credit because this is like 13 year old me. <laughs> not that smart. Not that. And I can remember the moment though, in all sincerity, I became so uncomfortable because I was like, holy 
probably holy bleep. I um he's right. This is accurate. And I felt very uncomfortable. I almost felt disoriented about like, wait a minute. I've been vehemently, passionately believing one thing that I am now gaining awareness <laughs> that is not accurate. And something else is accurate and it's about me. And I can remember like almost conceding and walking away from my bus fight, sitting down, going home and it bothering me mm. and being very uncomfortable for a while. And, you know, we're talking about self-awareness and that's a silly story and we have fun mm. with it. And it's kind of an original. It was the oldest story I can remember of really like a self-awareness clashing moment uh, as I was trying to reflect and prepare. But I kept asking like, well, what, why does it matter? Why does self-awareness, why does it matter? And for me, it's rooted in, it's rooted in Genesis 127. It's rooted in the Imago Dei. It's rooted in the fact that right there, God says that he made man, right? He's talking about man and woman. He made them in his image. And so for us, I do think it is critical <laughs> for us to be aware, for us to care about how we were made, our gifting, our wiring, I don't know that we need to care about our dress per se, but I do think we need to be aware and recognize how that might be a reflection of us. What are the things behind that? Um, and I think that's essential if we're talking about building integrated businesses, if we're talking about integrating our work into our Christian faith, like maintaining awareness is going to be essential in that journey. We're never going to arrive on it, um, but I think it is essential. So for us as leaders uh, of our small businesses that desire to do this, it's got to be foundational. It's got to be in our DNA to have an awareness culture. Okay. Um, and so two beliefs I want to share, two beliefs I want to share about, um, um, actually I'm going to pause on that. Let's do this. Let's do some awareness for ourselves and share with our listeners on ourselves. Cause I talked about, we're going to talk about the three tools, right? Which is, um, the three tools. I may have my order wrong. Help me. What's our order on talking about them episode wise? You don't have to listen to the episodes and see. <laughs> that a girl. I think this is right. <laughs> oh, is it on there? Okay. Myers Briggs, Enneagram, and Strengths Finder. Myers Briggs, Enneagram, and Strength Finder. Those are uh, tools we've used. So let's give our personality profiles. That's the term that Aaron has coined for us internally. Yes. Uh, and first we'll person ever up, to right? you, ever, trade, yeah. If you, trademark. If we <laughs> haven't trademarked it, we should. Um, why don't we share our Enneagram, I'm sorry, our personality profiles for the listeners and give a little awareness to them that we'll what we've learned about ourselves. Okay. I'm not going to go into any detail on this at this point, but um, for all of my fans out there who uh -huh. are wondering what my personality profile is. Thanks, Fair Brandon. Me. I love you. <laughs> um, love you, mom. Okay. There's my two fans. Madre um, and yep. Madre and Brandon. Um, okay. So uh, Myers-Briggs or MBTI, we'll mm -hmm. talk more about that later, mm -hmm. what those letters mean, but my letters on that are ESTP, um, I am an Enneagram eight wing seven mm. and my top strengths are my top five strengths that again, we'll talk about what that means later, uh, belief activator, command, positivity, and competition, which if I remember correctly, I share one with Michael and one with clay, a different one. Mm. So we have mm. a small bit of overlap there. Mm. Michael and I also have overlap in Enneagram and we all have some overlap in Myers Briggs. A little bit of extra version. Yeah. Michael, what's yeah. your personality profile? Yeah, so we'll talk more about the overlap, but as I share mine, they're very similar to Aaron's, and Aaron and I are so different, which is something we we'll talk more about. No, we're just putting people in a box. <laughs> That's all we're, we're just mm -hmm. putting right. people in boxes. Yeah. That's all That's we're right. doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Myers Briggs, I am an ESTJ. Yes. I am also an Enneagram eight, but I'm a wing nine. We'll talk about the difference on that. Mm -hmm. And my top five strengths are maximizer, strategic, futuristic, self-assurance, and command. Ooh, the command one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm an ENFP, ENFP Myers-Briggs, Enneagram 7, Wing 6. Putting New, breaking news, record. breaking news. The awareness journey <laughs> continues, and they're all having fun, and we're joking because... Um, that really, again, we all, ha you have both wings. Let's clarify that for everybody. But that's really um, uh, new awareness for me about being a wing six, thanks to uh, Aaron's teachings that she's been doing internally at Restoration Group at our final Fridays. Um, trademark. Trademark. That one is trademark. Yes. Sure. yes. Yeah, no chance. <laughs> um, but we we really uh, have been going on a journey um, as companies and that, you know, even for me, who I I think I'm a student of this stuff. I think I probably get into it more than even a lot of people yet. Yet I'm learning uh, new stuff. So yes, yeah, seven wings, six. Um, mine are context activator, 
input, um, achiever, no, no, arranger, and then belief um, are my five my five strengths, my five strengths, my personality profile. So we do have some overlap. What are you and I? Oh, belief. We have two. Oh. Uh, activator and yeah, yeah, yeah. belief. And belief. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, okay. So those are our personality profiles um, that for the tools that we use. So I'm going to couple those and I'm going to tie um, back to my, my story, my embarrassing story, um, and, the, and the Imago Dei principle. And I want to talk about two beliefs that I have come to hold to and have about self-awareness and even self-awareness in the workplace. Um, the first is this, is that all development begins, continues, and ends with self-awareness. All development begins, continues, and ends with self-awareness. And I, I've heard the phrase, all development begins with self-awareness before, um, but it has been a new thought for me recently and something I've been learning about. I actually think the key with it is that you have to continue with it. And also the thing that will shut down development and stop development is when we choose to end being self-aware. Uh, and I think the other belief I have contributes to why, you know, because why would somebody not be able to be self-aware? Why would you not want to be self-aware, right? goes with my second belief, and that's this, that the constant companion, this is definitely not mine, this is definitely not trademarked, I'm taking this from other people, Uh, the constant companion, the thing that always goes with self-awareness is a sense of inadequacy. Everyone's favorite sense and feeling is feeling inadequate, right? We always love that moment. I'm a fan. You're a fan? Yeah. What about you? You're a fan of being feeling What's inadequate? What's the next point? No, no, let's just let's <laughs> stay right there for a minute. Let's stay in feeling inadequate. Yeah, I'm really good at it. Yeah. So. <laughs> but the truth is that tension, that discomfort, that disorientation of feeling inadequate is the reason I think that people choose to be unaware, that we choose to ignore aspects of ourselves. Once awareness is brought to us and we talk about a development journey. So those two beliefs... Um, I think uh, kind of foundational for a lot of what we're going to talk about through the next uh, few episodes. They're why I think um, it's essential for us at Integrated Businesses to care about self-awareness because, again, I think it begins, continues, and ends, right? Self-awareness does. Um, And that's development professionally, personally, relationally, spiritually, all of those things. Um, And then the thing that's going to challenge that, tether into it, is this sense of inadequacy that always comes with self-awareness. So now let's go from some questions and let's make it personal because we're not going to just speak in hypotheticals around here. We're going to try to be courageously authentic. Um, Mikey, what awareness are you currently gaining about yourself right now? So this is frustrating (laughs) Um, because when I engage tools like this, I will often feel like I experienced a breakthrough overcame something and then it's like, okay, I overcame my impatience or my desire to have control over a situation. I like went to counseling, figure that out. Now I can move on and work on something else. And the pattern that I experience is that I continue to struggle with those things. They just manifest in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I get really frustrated when I feel like, especially I have a tendency to want to exert control over environments, to have control in situations. And it can be really unhealthy in home life, marriage, parenting. I've got a two-year-old. Can you teach me how to control a two-year-old? Right. And so that even like my son is probably what has resurfaced some of those things that it's like, I thought I was better Mm. at this. Mm. And then I am aware that I still am struggling with this root thing. It just is manifesting and coming out in a different way. Yeah. So I'm trying to embrace that these are like predisposed challenges that I have mm. that will probably not go away or cease to be things I challenge or struggle with, but I will mature in my capacity to deal with them. Mm. And I just want to check it off the list and it's like, oh, figure that out. Now I can move on. You to want to else. win counseling and okay. be done. My counselor has told me something to the effect of like, you can't like win this. Like you can't. <laughs> check this off and just move on and man, do I want to, (laughs) um, so that, that has been over the last six months or so, Hmm. just really leaning into the reality that like, I'm not messing up or failing because I'm still working on this thing. Yeah. And that would be my tendencies to feel like I'm backsliding or doing something wrong or 
maybe I'm not as intentional as I was three years ago. And that's why this is a struggle. And I don't think any of that's true. Mm. I think it's just part of the human experience Mm -hmm. and that different things in my environment have changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I might quote unquote, very heavy emphasis on that (laughs) master my environment, then something in the environment changes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, my root desire for this thing isn't what went away. It's that for this small moment of time, I was effectively controlling what I could control. And I got this sense that I had it figured out, Mm -hmm. but it was just an illusion. And then when that breaks, it feels like starting over. Yeah. I don't know. Something like that. (laughs) (laughs) And you have felt very adequate the whole time to deal with that tension every time it comes up. Uh, So I I absolutely struggle with feelings of inadequacy. Mm -hmm. I also think I don't struggle with it as much as people around me. And I think that's part of my personality wiring, Hmm. um, Enneagram eight self-assurance there, like my belief in my abilities are often inflated. (laughs) Um, and so that's more of what I have to be aware of is like not thinking too highly of my ability to handle Hmm. things and being more honest with myself. So I I don't want to undermine that inadequacy is something I can't relate to, but candidly, like I think other people in my life, my wife is a good example. Some close friends struggle with it more than I do. Mm. Um, and I also think that's part of how I'm made. Yep. And that that has different liabilities that are unhelpful. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. 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 Spoiler. I think there's some tie into your uh, Myers-Briggs. There's like a thing called like core theory. Mm-hmm. And I... Was is that a re- teaser? Is that a teaser? Mm-hmm. For yeah. You? Will the yes. next episode be a counseling session for me? We'll have to see, perhaps. Yeah. Come back next week yeah. and find out. I'll, I'll come back. <laughs> Aaron, what about you? What, are you? what awareness are you currently gaining about yourself? I had to make some notes because I felt like there's a lot. Um, I think I'm going to lean towards Strengths Finder, that tool, yep. in answering this question. Yep. I think recently, however long recently is, uh, recognizing how, so my belief strength is currently testing at the top of my top five. If you know about strengths finder, things can kind of bounce around a little bit, but it has always been in my like top five. It's currently at spot one and has been for a while. And I think I've just been recognizing how strong that is Mm -hmm. and how, and I think also as Michael pointed out, and we talk a lot here, like there's a lot of layers and layering all of these different personality typing systems together. So there's a through line for sure where Mm -hmm. I could pull out like, well, this seems like it's more Enneagram focused because I'm an Enneagram eight. And so things like that, but I actually made a few notes about, uh, some of the descriptor of people with the belief strength and especially this being like my top one, uh, life is more than, um, money position or prestige. The most important aspect of life is staying true to one's values. The vision of a just society is a profound motivator justice for self and others that goes beyond just fairness. And then this last one, uh, values give people with this, uh, strength, their lives meaning. So, I mean, something that like emphatic of like, the meaning that I find in life is highly tied to this strength. I've seen, I've, I've recognized that a lot more in myself recently. And so, um, and that can also, as Michael pointed out, have its pitfalls too, because then it's like, you know, I do one thing in my day that doesn't, you know, directly align with things that I'm passionate about or justice or whatever. And it's like, my life has no meaning. You know, (laughs) it's, it's easy to feel like, what am I doing? You know, like flailing or just like floating around or not living with purpose. And as Michael was pointing out, recognizing that that's, that's not, um, that's not a blanket statement for every person ever. Like everyone's wired differently. And I think my awareness that like not everyone deals with that or struggles with that. And I don't mean this in a negative way or, uh, like puffing myself up way, but just recognizing that other people can actually like, they can do things that they don't care on a deep level about that much. And it doesn't really bother them. You know, there's a lot of context there. Of course, there's a lot of nuances, but all in all to say that, like, it will bother me a lot faster and a lot deeper than it might bother someone else. Um, and you know, maybe bother is the wrong word there, but it's just an interesting, interesting dynamic that yeah. it feels like if every second of every day isn't super purpose driven for mm-hmm. the things that I'm wired for, it's easy for me to feel like, oh, what am I even like, yeah. what is this all for? Yeah. So, and, and you both have said this kind of as in talking about yourself and then not putting it on other people and talking about how other people are different than you. I think the beauty 
right? So now let's go back to the Imago day. Let's go back to the full awareness and let's bring it to the workplace. The beauty is those people who are wired different than you and are wired different than you and wired different than me are also made in the image of God, Mm -hmm. right? So thus then we're getting a little bit more of the picture of God because Mm -hmm. we're just using our own lens. Mm -hmm. It's a little... It's a little us centric to mm-hmm. think that like the way we're made, because we are made in his image, but yet so are you, so are you, so is someone else, so is our teammate, all these things. And that allows us to then begin to get, I'm going to say a holistic, mm-hmm. right? An integrated picture of God to understand him more, to then build a better body. Um, and I, you know, I'm using that term, you know, in a biblical sense, mm-hmm. but also saying within our team, we want to build a mm-hmm. larger unit, a body. Um, I think that's the beauty of these tools because we're talking about self-awareness, but there's also the team awareness, right? right. So then thus, once you're having your teammates do these, you learn more about me, I learn more about you, and we can then begin to see a more holistic, integrated mm-hmm. picture even of our company, of our team, those mm-hmm. we have the privilege of, of working with. So mm-hmm. I love the way you both shared shared those pieces. Um, tell me about a time. So now we're going to shift. I'm going to, sorry, before we shift though. No, no, we're going to shift. No, I'm just I think that's the, the most practical takeaway from this episode mm. is that the awareness of self and awareness of teammates, you know, from the workplace lens that just brings so much value and to exactly what you said of, uh, I think it, it brings us to a place of humility in remembering that every single person has value. Every single person is made in God's image although that might be very different. And I think about, you know, our our leadership teams and um, really like our leadership team with Restoration Group and Habakkuk together. Mm. And, you know, Michael talked about he and I are very different and we do have a lot of differences in that setting. Comparatively speaking, he and I and John Mark have a lot of similarities. And then kind of on the cusp of that, probably rub shoulders with similarities that you and Jared have. And then like way off there in the distance is Mason. And I think that's so great though. And we've talked so many times about what a value that is and that if, um, that the differences are really what bring the value to the table, but it's our awareness of those differences that allows us to leverage that instead of just being blind and hoping for the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was you, you taught me that when you did an internal training on strengths finder and it was one of the most, it was a quote I stole. Yeah. Well, okay. But I learned it from you learning it and teaching it, but it was that the power isn't even necessarily in the balance and the differences. There mm-hmm. is power in that, but that isn't the greatest power. The power is the awareness mm-hmm. of the differences and the strengths. You know what I mean? Those mm-hmm. aspects. And I thought that was just such a, a profound light bulb for me. Yeah. A off. more powerful thing isn't for us to look at a pie chart and say, yes. here's where we're lacking. We need to add somebody to the team that has these. It. It's just looking at the chart and saying, here's where we're lacking. Now we're aware. So when we're making a decision, we recognize the gaps. We recognize the strengths. We recognize where some of us might tend to lean one way and kind of uh, maybe overpower or, uh, or throw things out of balance. And so just having that awareness, not this frantic search for like, Oh, we have to plug all the holes. So let's, let's um, okay. For the three of us, let's find a real example that's happened recently soon are recently and soon phrases that we all love so much, but that, that backs that up, like where we use that awareness within our team or within one of our team members. So we use the tool, we use the awareness to help us, I don't know, make a different decision or go through a process. Does anybody have an example of that? Um, recently? I think there are tons of examples from my team. I'm, I'm not thinking of a specific one, but I feel like it's just like a theme where, um, you and I might talk about something or you might ask me about something in the HR world and we have enough similarities and overlap that, you know, we kind of talk it out and then you're kind of sending me to like, okay, let's go find the answer. And the awareness that I have gained and the differences between myself and my teammate that are very vast. Um, (laughs) it's like, I feel like we talked about some past episodes and I probably will again. And it's always talked about in the office is that like, we are very, yes, a yin yang there. Uh Sarah and I are just very different, but very complimentary. And that's the best example I can always think of is together. Like I'm more like, Hey, let's put action to this. And she's more, let's think through all the possible scenarios. And either one of those on their own can have their own defaults where I'm taking action too fast and making a rash decision that wasn't thought through and where she's maybe thinking through too many scenarios instead of taking action. And we have over time working together and the awareness of that, we found a really good balance um, to to make a better, I think a much better, healthier decision than either one of us doing it independently. That's good. Mikey? 
That what she's saying just made me think of that one time where we got our whole team together to uh, burn some. I already knew where you were going. Yep. In the in the back here at our office, mm-hmm. and it wasn't like a huge bonfire, but it wasn't a small fire. It wasn't a candle. And it wasn't a candle. It was not a candle. And Aaron was just like, "Let's just burn it all." And somebody <laughs> yeah. was like, "Did we like call and check on this?" And no, Aaron- the somebody was Clay asked, "Did we get a permit?" And my answer was very strategic. I said, it will be fine. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't lie and say, yeah, yeah. we got a permit. Yeah. I said, you it will be fine. fine. Yeah. And then, Did I really ask but you then, to get a permit? Yes. Hadn't Sarah like called and looked oh, into well, it? Oh, well, she like popped her head around the corner and was like, yeah, I think she had like done some research and, she had you know. certified our fire yeah. extinguishers. All the things. Previously well, checked the my vibe is code. just like, it'll be fine. Like. We what? can't control this fire. Exactly. What are the chances we're going to burn down the building? <laughs> slim. If we do, that's going to suck. <laughs> but it's a very slim chance that I'm willing to take. High yeah. risk, high reward, people. Oh, come on. That's so good. Yeah. Also, who has time for permits? Mm. Uh, to all of the city regulators listening, we have plenty of time for permits. We have filed all of them. Right, we, we respect your jobs. Thank you. <laughs> that was a, uh, yes, that that was a good example. It's good, yeah. lived out. Yep. It was good. In action. That was good. All right, before we uh, close, uh, any final thoughts from the two of you? Just kind of overarching before we move into the, um, just kind of a little preview of the next three episodes in the series. I can't stress enough how important I think self-awareness And when I say self, I mean self and team Mm -hmm. awareness awareness is in the workplace. I, I mean, I'm sure there's lots of businessy people out there that would argue with me, but I actually think that that is, um, that is a differentiator in business. You can Mm. be super, super business and book smart, but I think you will always lack something and there will always be more left on the table that you could, um, excel more and have a healthier, um, team and workplace environment and business, the more self-awareness that you have. It's good. Mikey. This is a great series to do with other people. So Hmm. I would encourage folks to send this series to some people on their team and to have discussion around it. It'll be much more effective. Yeah. I think that, you know, if we look backwards at the performance and dignity series, I think this approach, right, to an integrated, to an integrated business, caring about awareness, caring about people, being a student, like as a leader, um, and, you know, um, you are a listener, you are a viewer, you are a leader at your company. Um, I think there's an element to being a student, not just of yourself, but of your team, that is very essential. If you're going to balance performance and dignity, if you're going to get the best out of your people and care about them as a human being and steward that well, I think there is a, I'm not going to say an obligation, but I think it's essential. I think it is essential to do it well. Um, So again, looking forward, three parts uh, upcoming. Uh, The next episode will be on uh, Myers-Briggs. For the second part, we're going four weeks in a row, so we are, we're changing our formatting. And so just know that next week, come back and join us. Um, the verse, uh, oh, yeah, I'll, also just remember, we never arrive. This is a journey. Yeah, you for sure. You never arrive on this. We all uh, keep going. It takes us time. Um, we're always learning. Uh, you will fail, but fail forward. Uh, have humility. Um, be willing to hold up a mirror, even if it's on the bus and somebody's not so nice about it. Be willing to uh, hold up a mirror to yourself Ask other people who you trust to give you feedback to help you see that. Um, And then again, remember that the root of this, uh, and it actually just comes from the verse um, that was kind of the inspiration for for the episode, which is Genesis 127. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Until next week, choose life. Thanks for tuning into our show. If you want to learn more about how you can integrate your faith into your business, Download our integrated business guide for free by clicking the link in the show notes below. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.